in this week, we're talking about trust. Trust, um, no, it's love. Trust. So let's ask, let's ask. Which do you think is more important in a relationship? Love or, tr- or trust? We'll be right back. So, I would expect you to say love. You know, all these Korean things and things and things, right? But what do you think? Love or trust? Well, um, let me go. In, I'll, I'll go in the line of love. And why? Because I think love itself will then lead to trust. Um, why am I saying love? If we go the, allow me to say, biblical way of what love is, the Bible says love is patient, love is kind, love does not boast, not not envious, it's not um, rude. And so there's so many things about love that make it what you choose to do over and over again. And so when we're thinking of a relationship and what we think is important for a relationship, love is actually pretty important because I'm not talking about love the feeling, the way we all feel, oh, I like him, the butterflies and all of that. No, that's not sustainable. But I'm talking of love the God made, love the chops, love the decision, love the the intention to do something or to be this person, to this other person, regardless of who this person is or what this person does to me. So I would say love is very important for the success of a relationship. Coming to understand that trust is in is what I will call the first in a relationship, you know. Um, and let's even start with the most biblical or most um, used in my book reference. The Bible says, For God so loved the world, he is the only God's son, that whosoever believes, meaning you know that love will not work for you, no matter how much God loves you, if the element of faith or trust or acting on the fact that what she's been given to you is in place. It stops from the work. Trust is the is the prime that makes love work. Right. So two two people meet, a guy and a girl meet, and he says to her, "I am a, I am a, I am a, I'm a fireman, or I'm a policeman." And then two days later, someone tells her he's a psychopath. Right? What? From the moment, from that moment, she hears the psychopath. I would expect that any sensible girl will stop loving the person. First, relationship, you know, has to be guarded. It's the same way God expects you to guard your faith. There will always be people who will question your faith about Him. But if you say you love a person, then trust is what you must do or must have to exist in love with that person, right? And I, you know, when we talk to a lot of couples, I find that I find that a lot of people want to feel love. They want to feel the excitement of love, but yeah. they work on that foundation. Trust. I find that people don't, you know, either they don't have enough information to provide trust, or they don't care enough about the mission. And so, because of that, they carry doubts in their hearts. And once you start to doubt your relationship, once you start to question, you know, the is this person true? Is this person? Then in the end, you are going to erode that thing. That you call love and so with love must primarily come trust without it i tell you that if, if you know you're in a relationship and you don't trust the person get out of the relationship if you are not sure you can trust the person don't be in that relationship i find it love now you know i don't know what he does though. you know whether it's yahoo yahoo i don't know but as long as i'm he loves me i'm good no it, that relationship will not work so for a lot of ladies you know, you can do a relationship with a guy. I, 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 I always enjoy. quickly find out where is this person going. Let him tell you what is his plan for you. You know, without this, um, let's just date and see if you know it will work. No, no, it doesn't work that way. You meet a person. You want to define the type of relationship. If you meet a man now, for example, a young girl, an 18 year old girl meets me now. We are just hanging around together. What are we doing together? A married right no we're just trying to see if you're not trying to see anything define it you meet a, you meet a young guy who is in his 30s and he's telling you let's see how it works for the next seven years and you're doing that relationship so um before we're going to building trust i i would say that um trust also helps with having peace 
Because one of the things that is very, very important in your relationship is peace. And for you to have peace in your relationship with this person, with the other person, is when you trust the person. If my husband tells me he's going somewhere, I should be able to trust that he's going to the exact place that he said he's going. I shouldn't be worried and be checking and be wondering, is it exactly as he has said? And so yes, I agree with you. Trust has a very, very, um, is weighty when it comes to peace. Is weighty when it comes to going the long haul with the person because we found out most of the time when it comes to all these, oh, I love him, he loves me, and they can, can, it can seem fickle. And that's because it's love with the butterflies that, um, like we say, were not necessarily the, the choice of love, making love a choice over and over again. So when we talk about building trust, how are these ways that you can build trust um, in your relationship? The first thing that I always say is, openness you tell the person everything don't keep secrets the moment you are keeping secrets forget it you are on that very yes or, and the trust is so easy so it's so easy to destroy mm -hmm. trust takes a lot it's like you know um, recently i saw um a video where lagos state was demolishing some building some and Someone was putting a comment, put a comment that these buildings that took so long to, you know, come up and, you know, a lot of money had gone into construction. They're roofed, they weren't just, you know, half half um, built. And just like that, with Zikri, you know, what the other did you pull it down? Yeah, they just yes, you just pull it down. And that's how trust is. It takes a while to build it. But with just one reckless action that destroyed the whole thing. And so one of the things that you should guard generously in your relationship is your trust. We're talking about building trust because, because beyond building trust, you must maintain it. And so you must always be open. It's not that I was open with her when we started our relationship. And then you now have friends who begin to advise you, why are you telling your wife, why are you telling your wife, why are you telling your, wife? Are you telling your husband? Why what's happening, you guys begin to hide things from each other. Then you go down the drain of those who are beginning to think maybe we need to get a divorce. So always be open. I've heard all sorts of things. I've heard, I, I was also with a, uh, someone I respect a, you know, a lot who said to me, you shouldn't tell your wife everything. And I fundamentally did not agree. Um, my, fa my father used to say, there's why you're hiding yourself from somebody who is going to bury you. You know, while you want to have control and you want to have power in a relationship, um, you may want to, you know, you may think that you should hold back certain things. But, you know, again, I'll refer to the scripture that says, um, the, de the, the devil comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. It's like creating a small loop for doubt. And doubt is such a powerful thing, right? In that, let's imagine that, let's not even talk about sex or you know, let's talk about money. I don't want my wife to know all this money in the house. She can just start to make me spend anyhow. That statement already proves to you that you don't trust your wife. You don't trust that how she spends money. You don't, you either don't trust the fact that she's she she she's planning the future along with you. And so for me, when it comes to trust, it's not just openness, but there's also honest conversations. Conversations about your inner thoughts, your inner motivations. So this feeling of love is not just it's not the only thing that makes a marriage work. This is how I feel about something. This is how I feel about some, and being willing to take into consideration the other person's feelings. So again, you know, this idea of equality and all of that, I don't, I don't, I don't buy, it. because the way a woman relates with a thing is different from the way a man relates with a thing, and it's important that you are able to consider what the other person is feeling in this, you know, in those conversations. And it's for me a foundational thing that is important to build in trust, having honest conversations. Oh, I met this person, I had feelings for this person. I should control my feelings around this person rather than ah no, I never have ah, no 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 no. I mean ah, no, I'm, I'm controlled. I don't I don't have any problems. You know, I don't do these things, I don't do that. And uh, while at the end of the day you are lying about it, your work is supposed to be an equal partner. Inheritance of his life. Why are you hiding from them? The vice versa, the women, you know, because I hear these days that is what they say about it. Our money's uh, his money is our money, my money is my money complete rubbish 
<laughs> our money is our money. Your money is our money. My money is our money. Because we're supposed to be in the same boat, going in the same direction. Um, adding one more thing to that. Part of what makes it difficult sometimes to trust the other person is when you speak about honesty and being open, how the person, the receiving party, you know, processes, processes. information. Because that's actually one of the reasons why keep keep want to want to keep secrets. Not because they really want to, but because they're thinking I'm not sleeping in the house anymore if we eat that. Or if I tell him he won't trust me or he well I'm not well, he won't, you know. We get, start getting worried. Yes. You start so, talking about. Yeah. So, so the, the, whoever is the receiving party of whatever the news is, the information is, also has to, to, learn, to you know, learn to manage it appropriately. Be willing to forgive if it's something that needs forgiveness. Be willing to, you know, quickly understand, process it in a way that moves both of you forward. However, it is that you're processing, ensure that it is something that whatever you decide is moving both of you forward. Not the one that begins saying, "Hey, I cannot give her money. No, I cannot leave him alone with this person." Mm -hmm. That. And even if, you know, those are thoughts that come, you talk about it. Okay, how do we, what do I do? How do I ensure that this doesn't happen anymore? So say for instance, your husband comes to you and tells you that there's a certain lady that is tempting him or that he's, you know, he's having feelings towards. And the time you say, hey, can't you close your eyes? Hey, yeah, man, um, if you go to hell, you go to, you know, all that drama that begins to make the guy feel guilty and all that. Exactly what the line person does. Instead, you look and say, Okay, we need all right. So what do we do? Um, okay, let me let me know whenever I think that you have conversations with her. Let me see your chats with her and not see out of ah can you be talking about this, you know, but more of you know, just to to have that accountability partner. So that whenever I am speaking with the person, you know, she's aware, oh, is that lady that called you? And not just and the woman should not be, oh, you are talking to her too much, you are all that drama, no. But just you know, you're just there to help him to know that I'm with you. I'm with you through this. And that way, it's easier for him to come back to you and tell you something else next time. He knows that he's not going to feel judged, whatever it is he tells you. I think the most valuable thing, especially because women that usually end up in these circumstances the most, and it should be vice versa whenever this scenario presents itself, um, you need to know that your husband or your partner will meet other attractive people along their lifetimes. Their faithfulness will not stop them from being attracted to other people. It's what they do with that attraction that determines whether they're faithful or not. It's like saying that you are driving on the road and you will not meet a road bump, or there will be no street lights along the way. Those things will be there, right? But the key thing is that as long as he's going with you on the journey, you are all getting to the destination together, then that's that's the long goal that you keep your eyes on. Um, I find that for healthy relationships, both parties are able to talk about this things and not they are not afraid it says they're naked and they're not afraid they're able to share their inner thoughts they will share their fantasies they will share their worries they're able to share their burdens with each other that's a relationship that that's where trust is at its best i trust this person to carry me i trust this person to help me i trust this person to forgive me and and you see if we go to if we're able to examine if we're able to stretch this trust function treats it's maximum it will ensure that you have like she said peace and joy and so um as a takeaway i guess as a roundup mm -hmm. uh, we'll say to you you get into a relationship with a person you can't trust and if you're in a relationship with the person trust the person whatever you guys need to do whatever you guys need to do to get to that place where you absolutely each other. trust each other right that's what you should focus on thank you Thank you. Don't forget to like, share, and comment. This is um, Love Unscripted with the Tumult. Thank you.